such a frustrating it should never be currency to like get evidence that you've done something in your life yeah, yeah. you know it's not like i don't i don't they didn't do that in shakespeare's time <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can it's use like, the footage. Yeah, that doesn't exist, bro. Yeah, you either just show up to the audition or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I tell you? You would not believe how many times that I, uh, actually did like a short film or a film, and then I was told that I would be paid in real footage, and I never got it. Oh. You had no idea worst. how many times that happens. I remember their names. I remember their faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no when. Uh, uh, when someone's screwing you over like that, they get on your shit list. Like, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Mm, mm, oh, yeah, no, because mm, mm, in college, mm. one short film I was working on, like, the uh, the editor, like, I gave him the f uh, all the footage with plenty of time to put it together. And then, like, two or three days before it was due, he dropped out. And it's like, I haven't st even started on Bring it. Bring the mic a little closer to you. Like this? A little closer. That's it. <laughs> Kiss it. It just feels in my <laughs> face right now. Don't Kiss it. Don't neglect the balls. Don't neglect the balls. <laughs> don't, uh, pepper grinder. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you were go, saying go on, about go on, people on. on your shit list yeah, 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 as yeah. we go proceed on, to yeah, so, make fun uh, of yeah, you. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So like he dro uh, he dropped out with like two uh, uh, with like two days before the films. D uh, uh, do it's just like yeah I can't uh, I can't do it and, uh, and it's just like fucking uh, uh, why and. Uh, 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 and then, uh, and then senior year, I was on the officer board of the f uh, of the film cl uh, uh, club, and uh, uh, at some point we uh, uh, we got an email and, and saying like expressing interest, and I recognized his name, and I was just like, first off, you've been here, you're still on our email oh, uh, shit. Uh, list. S uh, oh. Second, it's like you have proven yourself not a good member. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, do yeah. I do wonder how much each like piece of real like is in actual money. It's like okay, a crying shot of you is worth twenty bucks. If you are screaming in the real, it's forty bucks. Smizing <laughs> two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Smizing is always more. Yeah, it's like you, uh, what if you're real is just like you know that sort of yelling that people are like, this is an Oscar worthy performance. What if you're real is just that for three <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 that's good. <laughs> did you ever see Jupiter ascending? No, I never did. did you oh, see wait, it? I saw part of it. I, uh, I watched it with some friends as part of like a bad movie night. And, uh, mm. uh, and after a while, we were just talking, not even watching a movie. That's Aww. so fair. In Jupiter ascending. Eddie Redmayne, who that year I think had won an Oscar for um, Danish it was, Girl. It was no, either Danish was, Theory of Everything. Theory of everything. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that because there was someone I definitely wanted to win over him. Who Do you was remember it? who? Uh, oh yeah, Michael Keaton for Birdman. Uh, uh, are you a Birdman stan? I hated the movie. I didn't oh, really? like it. I didn't like it. No, I I enjoy it. Like maybe it, hate is a strong word, but it just I didn't I didn't get it. It didn't resonate with me. Like I definitely understand that because it's a certain style that I get why not everyone mm. would like it. But I love Michael Keaton. Yeah, is to me it's one of those movies where it's like every time I uh, uh, watched it, there are like new things I uh, I pick up. Mm. How many times have you seen Interesting. it? Interesting. I've seen it probably three or four times, but it's been a few years. Okay. I feel like with Birdman, I I felt like it didn't have a soul. Yes. Like it was beautifully yeah. shot. It was. It was. Really it was. Well you acted. could. You could tell that yeah. so much effort went Where into it. Where do you see the yeah. soul in it? Yeah. For you, like, what is the messaging for you? Uh, well, I think the soul is behind like Michael Ke uh, uh, Keaton's ca uh, character, like trying. Uh, Essentially, he's trying to find satisfaction in other people's wor uh, worries, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and he's not really seeing that as himself. Because he, uh, uh, instead of seeing himself as someone talented, he sees himself as someone washed up. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I love that kind of thing. Like narrative. Like there was a film a few years ago called Dumplin' that was really critically panned. It was oh, like oh, this is one that Dolly Parton was in, wasn't it? It was all of her songs. Yes. Jennifer, it, Jennifer Aniston, Aniston was a mom, and then someone was. There was uh, like a little daughter. girl who played like a chubby little girl. Yes. In it. Wait, so it, was this like, like you know how Mama Mia was just made to put a bunch of ABBA songs in, in a musical? Yeah. Was this like that for Dolly Parton music? It wasn't like a jukebox musical. Like they weren't like singing Dolly Parton. That would be funny if they were like. I don't know if they just. It would be funny <laughs> if Dolly Parton was just in the corner, like, oh, I know this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who 
wrote that? Yeah. It was about this little like chubby girl and she just like was like her internal misbelief in the world was that like because she was a chubby girl, like no one would ever like her. And she just kept fighting against all the people who genuinely liked her because she was like, no way, you're all making fun of me. You're all making fun of me. And I like those kinds of things because it goes, it, 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 I think speaks to the culture that we live in. We're like, we're also influenced in the generation we're in, like by like movies from the early two thousands that had these crazy narratives. Like I used to think popular girls had no feelings. <laughs> Cause I watched so many movies from the two thousands. And then you grow up and you realize, oh, I don't have feelings either. Yeah. yeah. Well I realize I'm the asshole. Yeah. 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 Just your full Liz Lemon moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, she was always the asshole. Yeah, she was. Yeah. No, yep. it's crazy because like sometimes on dating ads, I'll see uh, 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 girls uh, being uh, being like, "I'm Liz Lemon" or so uh, or something like that. And I'm like, you did not understand Thirty Rock. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want the gym to my Pam. Well, both of them suck. Yeah. So no, yeah. you don't want that. They both kind of mentally terrorized Dwight. Yeah, like I feel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like uh, like Liz, uh, like it. On some level, I feel like Thirty Rock is just kind of like. Wolf of Wall Street or a Fight Club for women? <laughs> like, <laughs> do go on, do go on. <laughs> no, cause, no, because you know how like if you see a guy who likes Fight Club, you got you kind of gotta be like, all right, do you like Fight Club for the right reasons though? Right. Like, do you yeah. think Tyler Durgan is the hero? Oh my God, true. What was that tweet that was like Fight Club is gay for making? Um, Brad Pitt dress up in those slutty little outfits in that guy's mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the writer or the director gay though? Of Fight Club? I don't think so. Chuck it, Palinchuk? David yeah. Fincher directed it. Oh, okay, maybe the writer then. David I, Fincher I saw... is not gay, but he is evil. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Um, <laughs> Gabby, people can be gay and evil. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gay people can do anything. <laughs> Anything They can't be straight <laughs> I don't have a response <laughs> Yeah what are you thinking about uh, uh, What do you think of that I was like I was trying to come up with a retort I was like Yeah they, they, they can And and then they're not gay <laughs> I don't know what, what we just like Created a new letter To the LGBTQ <laughs> Yeah, yeah, evil. <laughs> LGBTQIA. No, that's April Clark. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? We're having too many throwbacks to previous uh, episodes. I think it's probably time that we properly introduce our guest and say welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats podcast. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. We have a spectacular guest uh, with you, a wonderful comedian. You know him, you love him. Give it up for Belton Delane Facey. Belton. Yay. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on, my man. Belton yeah. is a movie buff and an oh, yeah. absolute and a delight. regular buff as and well. A regular buff. <laughs> and it, he's buff. He's got the guns. And he's on the and he's on the apps. <laughs> he's out there. Yeah. Snatch him up. <laughs> yeah. He's on the apps. Amber alert. <laughs> <laughs> citizen. <laughs> he's on the citizen app. This is an app. Is that uh, okay? So citizen app is that? Uh, I've never had. Is that just where people report like petty things? <laughs> you can. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I have notifications turned off. <laughs> I don't, I don't Luke, get this it. This is not a concern. Uh, I'm not a good citizen. He doesn't I'm care. Not. Yeah, I don't know. Cause in my mind, I'm like, if there were a series of robberies, you would call 911. But if, uh, but so this isn't just like, my neighbor's being annoying. I want the neighborhood to know. Mm. Yeah, there are things like that. Like they do report murder, but also, I got a notification once that was woman singing Nicki Minaj outside your train. <laughs> I was like, why is this a threat? I actually love this. I want more of this. And I have seen her since, and she has Wait, many what if ways. This, what if this individual was singing Nicki Minaj or rapping Nicki Minaj so well that it was a threat to Nicki Minaj's career? Putting oh, her out my of are you saying the barbs came after her? Yes. Because <laughs> the barbs are crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah we can't like let the, her take over the empire. The barbs just uh, posted her, uh, that woman online. It's like, Nicki Minaj, you have to fight her. <laughs> 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 do you guys remember when Lana Del Rey put up that post that was okay no you guys both looked <laughs> no, at me yeah. I just realized I'm talking to two heterosexual men okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this for a second we got time 
Lana Del Rey put up a post that was like, it's great that like, Nicki Minaj, Doja Cat, Ariana Grande, Camila Cabello, named a ton of artists, are having these like big resurgences. But what about softer women like me? It was like very coded and very like maybe racial, except for Ariana Grande, who I'm sure was like thrilled to be lumped in with these black women. <laughs> and she also said, Cardi- "I think Ariana <laughs> Grande was like, it worked." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she was able to go to Japanese. After. Yeah, yeah. She was like, "All right, mission complete. Time to move <laughs> on." Now that I know, that photo I know. Oh my god, you've seen that photo. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, it. yeah, you have. Yeah. On to the next race, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and um, underneath the comments for this Lana thing, all of Lana's fans were like, "Lana." We love you, but we are a small fan base. Please do not make us face the barbs. <laughs> Everyone is terrified of the barbs. They're a threat to society. Oh, yeah. It's, I, it sounds like the same tone as if like a small country is ruled by a dictator and dictator is like, we're going to war. And they're like, we don't want to. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> we don't want to exactly- fight for our rights that badly. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I don't know. I... Uh, See, I was we'll do just, it if you if you need us to, but we're gonna die a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it was like I was just vaguely aware of Lana Del, uh, Del Rey, and then like in uh, high school, uh, a girlfriend I had, she was into it, so that's when I first heard her music. Everything I've heard of this woman since then has been problematic, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was the girl problematic who you were into in high no, school? No, okay. Uh, I wouldn't call her problematic. Okay. Okay, that's good. Well, if you would shout out to you, that. shout out to you, whoever you are, if you're listening, because sure it was it was it was uh, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, you dated mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj in high school. Yeah. Oh yeah, you went to LaGuardia High School. I didn't yeah. know this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, LaGuardia, where like all the celebrities go, apparently, including this one. <sighs> <sighs> Terrible place. <laughs> Terrible place. There was an unnamed person. I will not name who he is. Okay. My friend uh, saw him recently because. He is like close. He has a close mutual friend with uh, with this friend of mine. It's a celebrity who I'm talking about. Okay, a celebrity who I peripherally know and who my friend knows. And the celebrity looked my friend in the eye. He's a white man, and said, "I could play black on screen. I could play black." And uh, my friend got in an argument with him about it denzel washington it was <laughs> <laughs> he's like hey i, I can play black <laughs> <laughs> i love the <laughs> idea of like a legit black actor being like hey i can do this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like he just has that on his resume and it's just like i can do accents i can do stunts i can be black <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a special skill it's like whistling <laughs> Yeah, I learned to be black like, after a while. <laughs> oh my god! I was yeah. like Wesley Snipes had that on his resume. Then he got, then he went to jail for a white collar crime, and they're like, mm, "Can you though?" Yeah. yeah, you're an embarrassment to us. <laughs> what did he go to jail for? It was like some tax sort of something? tax evasion yeah. or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that is a super yeah. white collar crime. That's why yeah. they call it white uh, collar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know, but my dad thinks that like uh, I'm not sure if my dad has explicitly said like his acting got worse after that, but he's just like prison made him lose his edge. <laughs> oh, interesting. Like how people say like Danny Brown got less good after he stopped doing drugs, which is like a really fucked up thing to say, but people do say that about his rap. Mm. He yeah. follows me on Instagram. Does he? Yeah. He seems like. Well, at least I saw him follow me. I'm not sure if he still does, but if you do, hi, Danny. What's up? What's up? I hope you listen. Love the new podcast also. Yeah, it's called The Danny Brown Show. He's hilarious. Oh, man. He's so funny. Yeah. I got to listen. Yeah. 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 I remember, remember like, a while ago, I worked at a soundstage and he, like, uh, shot this this show there. And it it was cool to see him. Unfortunately, they didn't come back because. The soundstage was poorly run, so the producers didn't like it. Oh god, <laughs> that's terrible. That sucks. But he was a nice guy. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You, you, you don't hear enough nice stories about celebrities. Just them being nice, chill people. Yeah. One is it, Danny DeVito. Everyone who who meets Danny DeVito says he's a darling of a yeah. person. Oh yeah. Paul uh, Rudd, Keanu Reeves. There's a handful, but there's not many. Uh, yeah, because. Uh, uh, 
because like working uh, working on film sets it's like i'm just uh, i'm just glad like when i see a celebrity and i just have like a good interaction with them so yeah. remind of uh, for for those who don't know you who are listening yes. what do you so what do you do on film sets are you a pa yeah i'm a pa a lot of the time sometimes i work, uh, I work in the uh, uh, in the office uh, uh, so like there i obviously don't meet a whole lot of people mm. uh, uh, but like i've been a, P- a pa for a, f- a few years i uh, i worked here and there on various shows i uh, i think the two most popular shows i've worked on are project runway and impractical jokers oh, oh yeah is it different working on a so pa is a production assistant for those who don't know is it different working on like a reality show as opposed to like a, a fic- like a fictionalized or serialized show. So most of what I work on are reality or docu series because my first job was a reality show, and so that's just kind of where my circle grew. Mm. Yeah, that I makes see. sense. Yeah. I- Wait, what was like the first day on the job like? Were you like really excited? Were you nervous about maybe? Uh, destroying the illu- I, I'm putting myself in your shoes if I was working on a real or something realist like impractical jokers where you're dealing with real people getting their real reactions I would be so scared of ruining the illusion or or ruining the the prank of it you know well so so the thing yeah. is it, uh, like a show with impractical jo- uh, and jokers like most of uh, my work on set would be helping to set up because uh, uh, like uh, like helping the uh, uh, like the camera crew put the hidden cameras uh, everywhere, helping set, uh, set up the control uh, the control room. Once they're running, it's kind of uh, like everyone who's not necessary gets out the way, and th- uh, and they're just running for like two hours. Wow. Okay. okay. That mm. makes sense. So you're sort of hands off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while uh, while they're shooting. Right. Yeah. 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 I got you. Uh, yeah. Because my very first day, uh, day ever as a uh, as a PA, I was kind of just like, all right, let's not fuck up. Yeah, of course. Oh, absolutely. I, when I was a PA for the first time, I've been a PA like pretty much, like a set PA pretty much one time. And um, I was really new to it. So they gave me one task and they were like, guard this door. I said, all right, bet. I'm going to guard this door. Uh, they neglected to tell me that an actor had an entrance. <gasps> Through that door. Oh, you stopped the actor. From so I through. was like, I will let nobody through this door. Oh. <laughs> and at one point they were like shooting and the actor was trying to enter. And he was like, let me through. <laughs> he did not know it was him. So I was like holding it like with all my might. And then he just like bursts in and he sees me. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. That's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, did did they did the actor continue staying mad at you, or were they mad at so, who was your superior, which is who you should they be? They kind of were mad at anyone. They just like brushed it, like they didn't really speak to me, you know, because they. I guess he was trying to be in the zone or whatever. Like I see. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of just brushed it off, which I respect. I I'm sure you feel this way too. Like sometimes it's almost nicer when like a celebrity or person is just like, this is my job and like, doesn't really interact. That is good. Yeah. I, I like that. I respect that. Uh, yeah. I respect that. Oh a yeah. Lot. No. Cause I definitely see like a lot, uh, like a lot of them, especially because uh, uh, like, I don't think a lot of people who are just like casual fans of TV and movies realize like how much work that uh, and some of their favorite celebrities do, but uh, like that's off camera. And so, mm. uh, and so like there are times where they're really working and they are completely dialed in. Yeah. Uh, it does. Well, can I ask, are you aware of any actors or people that you have worked with that have had the rule? No one can even look at me on set because I've been hearing more and more stories about people that have like been on set with big names. And these big names have like a, a clause in their contract or whatever that says no one who works in the crew can look at me in the eye. I'm not allowed to look uh, Lucas <laughs> in the eye. I, I haven't been on a set like th- that. I think that's mostly b- it because I mostly work on reality and docu yeah. se- right. series where people who are used to being on camera for those for the most uh, part are just used to different environments. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. like sometimes they'll just be walking out in public and it's like you can't tell the general public to not look at you. Right. So, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. Enough. But yeah. you remember when like Sid King was on and she was talking about how like Kim Kardashian was like, oh, no one look at me. 
Oh. And then I've also heard similar things about Adam Adam Driver. Again, these are all rumors. These are not confirmed. Uh, I don't want to spread stuff that may not be true, but I don't. But I've heard it too much for it to not be true that it is a thing. Yeah, I, Nicki Minaj. You know? I mean, the, just kidding. <laughs> I mean, the closest I've come across are uh, are celebrities who, uh, who are like, while I'm doing this interview, everyone unnecessary, please be offset, and like. Please just no movement in my eye line because that's distracting. And I want to be okay. focused on the person I'm interviewing. That's at Is least it? that's at least a thing that has a reason for a goal. Yeah. And that's like, you know, yeah, you can respect I that, I think. Uh, yeah, because I mean, uh, I mean, most uh, uh, most uh, celebrities is like they just, uh, they just want to like get their work done. But most of them are uh, are chill. Like uh, uh, like one time some, one of them saw like this comic book I was reading. Uh, and I was reading just in my spare, in spare time, and they were just like, "What's that? It looks interesting." And then we just talked about it for a bit. That's great. Oh, that's, that's a lovely awesome. interaction. Yeah. yeah, I love the idea of like big celebrities reading comic books. Yeah, yeah. They're, that's good. you know what? People who write those magazines that are like they're just like us. Here they are at the store. They're never like they're just like us. Here's them watching Avatar. Yeah, yeah. like here's, they never show them doing lame shit. Here's them stubbing a toe. Oh, oh my god that would be good no it's like i love when celebrities like talk about their shit especially when you when like expect it from them like i've learned from clips megan the stallion's a huge nerd yes I've she heard loves that. anime yeah she, yeah, she loves, loves anime. anime like i've seen her do interviews where she just talks about like x-men comic books and she's talking about like specific runs and the difference be uh, between them and i was uh, and i was just like this is amazing yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. i rules. would love to meet her she, I would, I would. Megan Stallion, come on the pod. You're so come on welcome. The pod. You're welcome to interrupt this episode. Just kick Belton out. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. okay. I'm just, a, I just had this intrusive thought of her with her like long legs, and she's standing like over there by where this left camera is. And mm -hmm. for those listening, the left camera is Belton's camera, thirty <laughs> feet from Belton, yeah. and <laughs> Megan the Stallion reaches one of her thirty feet legs Hell over yeah. to Belton Keep and talking. kicks him with with like her heel that's another ten feet long. Oh yeah, and <laughs> stabs him in the chest. Oh and yeah, then comes and sits in the seat and just goes. So anime. Yeah. <laughs> Like just over my dead body, literally. Yeah. Well, now I've come. Now, <laughs> it's now I've arousing. now I've arrived. Yeah. It's too rousing. Bone, yeah. do you have a celebrity crush? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I've, uh, uh, let's Which see, reminds I've, me about something else I want to talk about, but I'm putting a pin in it. Who's your celebrity crush? Can you please continue. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, let's see. I think the uh, last time I thought about this, it was Diane Guerrero. Who's that again? Uh, she uh, she was on Orange is the New Black and Jane oh, the Virgin. On yeah. Jane the Virgin, she was J uh, Jane's friend. I think I I think I know the girl you're talking about. I mean, I all of the Orange is the New Black yeah. women are very beautiful. It's, uh, it's like her and th this person is definitely. Oh, uh, she's gorgeous. Yep. Yeah, th her and this person is definitely this less well known, but Alicia Wainwright. She was on a show called Ooh. Raising Dion. Oh, what's Raising Dion about? So Raising Dion is, uh, basically the, is about a single mom, and suddenly she discovers her eight-year-old kid has superpowers. Oh, shit. Oh. oh yeah, Alicia Wainwright, also very beautiful. Just, yeah. Easy. Oh, what a total hottie. Yep, of course. Yeah. I, I love when people have, like, kind of, like, niche and specific celebrity crushes. Yeah. Because you hear the Scarlett Johansons of the world so often, and at some point it's like, do you really... Like, yeah. or are you just saying that to have an answer to the question? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like you have your default answer. You have not uh, either pay attention to enough ce uh, celebrities or uh, or like grew enough to have your own answer. Yeah, absolutely. But something that I wanted to bring up is, did you guys hear the recent uh, sliding into DMs controversy surrounding Doja Cat? <laughs> I saw that. That was you, hilarious. You know, cause the, uh, no, because no shop's video popped up on my For You page. Yes, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. this is amazing. And I immediately sent, uh, sent it to everyone I know who watches Stranger Things. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, so d have you seen Stranger Things? Do you like Stranger Things? I've, I've maybe seen two minutes of one episode and I'm like, okay. this looks like it's going to be long. All right. I you mean, know, I mean, it's, it is. I mean, it is long. It is long. Um, but so here's what happens. So in the newest season, season four, there is a character called Eddie Munson that's very popular. A lot of people like this character. His actor is called Joseph Quinn. Right? Yeah, I know his last name is Quinn. I forget. Yeah, it is Joseph. Yeah, it's Joseph Quinn. And so a lot of people like him. A lot of people think he's attractive. Uh, Doja Cat agrees that this dude is very attractive. 
Uh, she starts talking with Noah Schnapp, who's one of the child actors on the show. He's like 17 now. And but she's just like, oh, my God, I think he's really cute. Uh, but then she's like, oh, shit, does he have a girlfriend or anything? And he's like, absolutely not. Slide in those DMs. And she's like, oh, what, what's his account? And and Noah sends her um, Joseph's account. And he goes like, here you go. And it's very nice interaction. But then Noah Schnapp takes a screenshot of that conversation, shares it with the world. And he thinks it's like funny and charming. I really believe that he didn't have anything malicious in his heart. But then Doja Cat, very understandably had uh, her privacy invaded by having that displayed to the public. And she was really mad at this 17 year old kid, Noah Schnapp. And that's what's going on. So are you going to say he, she snapped at him? <laughs> I can't, but you can. Yeah. And yes. yep, you're out. You're done. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Gabby just peaked for the episode. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. So do you have any like takeaways from that? Because I mean, look, I understand, like, she is, she's mad because that was a prior conversation that, is, that he yeah. made public. But at the same time, as soon as I saw the conversation, my immediate thought was, what are you doing? You're Doja Cat. Like, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Exactly. You can like, do that to anyone. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's like, it's just weird because instead of sliding into this dude's uh, DMs, which, like, I'm sure if you just search for him, she could have found his Instagram. A gram account, but it's like you're going to his child co worker essentially. Yeah, like, I don't know what there are adults on the show who know Joseph Quinn. Yeah, like, guess, yeah, like, does everyone, Joseph Quinn not have no, like, he's what? on social media. Yeah, and, and she gets sent his social media account for him for her to slide into the DMs of. I bet you I could find this. Something isn't adding up to me. Something, something's amiss. I think this is a sigh up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, what, is it, what is this? Just really clever marketing for some upcoming Netflix project. That's oh, what I maybe. think. Maybe psyop implies like the government did it. You see, but then again, I uh, I actually think this is very real because something that I've learned over time is that people are far less interesting than you give them credit to be. People no, are a I lot more mundane that. and regular, and mistakes no. happen. And a lot of people think, oh, there's a secret order going on, and this is all a bit one. Big there's not a big strategy. But why was one of the messages, what's his account? <laughs> I think she's, I, I, genuinely, I think she might be on lazy oh. or just like not. No. Nope. I've looked at, I don't know. Let me find my phone. I want to see how quickly I can find his account. All right, let's all see. Because right. if I can find his account. Well, another thing that I started thinking about, which was that I put myself in Noah Schnapp's shoes, and I thought, I may have thought that it would be a really funny and interesting thing for people to see to see this screenshot and this conversation. Like, oh, my God. First maybe... result. First result. <laughs> yeah. First result. And it's verified, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I could DM him right now. And you can. I'm yeah. doing it. Do it. You just get more steps than Joja Cat. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny if you, if everyone started messaging him, being like, "Hey, what's Joseph Quinn's Instagram?" <laughs> 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 everyone, yeah. But the thing is, I put myself in his shoes, and I thought there is a chance that I may have like done his thing, thinking, "Oh, the people will love this," and not realizing I'm invading someone's privacy. I just messaged him, yeah. "Hi, yeah. I work for Doja Cat," <laughs> and now I'm going to unsend the message oh because I feel bad. I mean, he will never see it, but. Yeah, no, I could definitely see like as seventeen year uh, years old being in his, sh his shoes. Like, I could see him thinking it was a joke. Exactly, like, exactly. It had to be a joke because I just found his account so. F <laughs> this is what's yeah. killing me. Yeah, you don't even watch Stranger Things. You have yeah, no, no idea what he looks like. This isn't adding up. I'm going. You don't even crazy. know who he is, and you found him like that. It's going. I'm going crazy. It's giving crazy. <laughs> you know who's snapping me? Who's <laughs> snapping about this? This has me snapping, folks. You know what's awful about his name is that you can't make fun of it. You're like, snap, snap. You know how people yeah. like do a schna at the end of, like, when they're making fun of something? Like, God damn, it's already there. Yeah. yeah if, uh, all right. You know how, like, some celebrity names are actual uh, names are just, like, long and hard pr uh, to pronounce? Yeah. So, it's, like, they give a stage name. Long and hard. <laughs> Yeah, long, uh, long and hard, how it should be, except Hollywood didn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, John Stewart's real name is John Long and Hard. Oh, yeah. But he's yeah. Jewish, so it's John Long and Hard. 
It's true. That's, I don't <laughs> like how know? good of a joke that was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Belton, you no, were saying. I was just saying, like, Snap sounds like uh, the can, the condensation of one of those names. Yes. Right? yes. You're so you, right. You're right. It does sound a bit like that. Yeah. His real name is probably like Schnappenstein. Oh, yeah. yeah. He like, is Jewish. I, I, did, I did Google him. I looked him up on Wikipedia. I think he's like half Jewish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, part of me expecting to see his full name. It's just one of those names that just has like five consonants in a row. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. the Stranger Things children hang out outside of the show? I I'm think they do. Yeah, I, do. I think they do. I think I, they do. Yeah. I know like the actors for Lucas and uh, Max, they were actually friends before the show. Oh, that's really? Nice. Yeah. That's good. They, they were both on Broadway together. Oh, Aww. shit. I love that. That's like how every child actor of our generation was in the show 13 on Broadway. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We both kind of looked at each other like, we don't know any show called 13. Once <laughs> again, you heterosexual men. What am I? What am I meant to say? Oh, sorry. The, I'm sorry that I have too much red blooded American yeah. blood in oh, my veins. The basketball teams. I, I mean, I have an excuse. I, Lucas, you're a theater kid. I feel like you should. Know that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was never. Know. Was it a musical? Thirteen. Was yeah, it, a it was a musical. I was never yeah. a musical person. Okay. I was never that into musicals. If he could say, I was into raw drama, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been a different tune. I liked grit. Yeah. Wait, we bring up we bring up basketball, we bring up sports. I heard something recently that's crazy. So I don't really follow basketball. Um, but I heard about this drama with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. And it is a real human interest story. Tell us about what happened. Okay. You don't even need to know basketball. Okay, to love this okay. Story. so for full disclo uh, full disclosure, I'm a Nets fan. Okay. Have uh, I grew up in New Jersey, so I have been since they were in uh, New Jersey. Yeah. And I will say, like, before I get into all the drama, the, uh, I have sat through a season where the Nets went 12 and 70, and this past season was the most exhausting it's been to be a Nets fan. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And they started the season with, like, aspirations of winning a title. Of course mm -hmm. they did. Uh -huh. I mean, we all do. We all do, but also what I what I came to understand, I went to lunch with my friend and he told me about this, is that the Nets acquired these three players. It was like James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant, who were like the best players. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, so ba uh, basically, uh, let's see how quickly I can sum up everything. Summer of, tw uh, of 2019, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are both free agents. The Nets just had an unexpectedly pretty, uh, pretty good year where they made the playoffs. So, like, they were, uh, they were able to sign both those guys in free, uh, in free agency. Kevin Durant w uh, was injured all of the, uh, the following season. Everyone knew that was going to ha happen. So then the next— Is he injury-prone? Uh, He—now he, he kind of is uh, because he had, like, one major in, uh, injury that took him a full year to recover from. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, what so was the injury? It, it, I think it was like an Achilles tear. Ooh. Yeah, it, it, it happened during the NBA Finals, which like it was one of those non-contact injuries, and someone slowed down the clip, and you can see the exact moment his Achilles tear. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if I could watch that. I don't think I would. Which I knew basketball. You were going, you were yeah. Going, yeah, basketball, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But all right. So the following se season. Uh, 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 Kevin Durant and Kyrie, they're playing together. Nets are doing well. Then James Harden, who's on the Rockets at the, at the time, he demands a trade. And so the Nets trade a, uh, a bunch of the supporting cast players and a, a bunch of like future draft picks to get James Harden. And, then, and so the following it, and so that season, they go to the playoffs, they, it, and they get knocked out in seven games by the Bucks, who go on to win the title. So why did James Harden demand a trade from his original team? Uh, probably because, like, it just didn't look like they were going to win a title yeah. while he was there. Because, like, throughout his time there, they moved a bunch of play players in and out to try to build a team around them. And I think they went to, like, the conference finals once. Uh, Interesting. Uh, because I th I'm trying to explain this as, in as much of a theatrical way as possible. You already oh, helped by saying Put it into supporting terms cast. That I can understand. <laughs> you already helped by saying they traded the supporting cast for the lead role. Right. Yeah, it, it, 
Uh, and the thing is, like, as a fan, like, a lot of those supporting players, like, developed so much on the Nets that, like, as a fan, I want them to win a title with these guys. And, right. Like, yeah, of course. You want them to win a title as the cohesive team that they've built <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now, because, like, after they trade James Harden, it's, like, the rest of the NBA community just, like, hates the Nets because they're, like, we don't want them to just buy a title, which is, like, as as a Nets fan, it feels like they are the least, like, storied or, or, like, worst team history for a team that's being so hated on. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. not to mention buying a title is always just, like, a way of being anti-labor. Because it's saying like, don't buy a title, as in don't play, pay players what they're worth. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, so anyway, like uh, so this past uh, season, as I'm sure you guys know, there was like uh, vaccine uh, vaccine mandates, where it's like to be in certain in certain areas and to work in certain places, you uh, you had to have the COVID vaccine, uh, and uh, and. NBA games are considered public events. So Kyrie Irving, who's a pseudo intellectual and anti vaxxer, couldn't play home games. And a flat earther, right? Yeah, and a flat earther. Oh my earther. god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he. Yeah. So he couldn't pl- uh, uh, play. He never uses basketball as an analogy for the Earth. I just realized. <laughs> that. Wait. Yeah. If the Earth is flat, how would basketball exist? No. The the best analogy I've. Uh, uh, I've heard for Kyrie Irving is he is just Kanye with a crazy layup package. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like he has, uh, like he's a pseudo intellectual. He will sp- uh, spout off cra- uh, crazy ideas. Granted, he does donate a lot of money to good causes, but, but it's like his ideas kind of uh, overwhelm that as sometimes. But Oy. put him in the paint, he's gonna put in the hole. Mm. But, but flat earthers are like diff- like even Kanye I feel like I'd be like is the earth flat and he'd be like no the earth's round it's just that I am Jesus Christ yeah <laughs> it's like okay well at least you got one thing right he is Jesus yeah so yeah so this past season amid that and then Kevin Durant was still dealing with uh, injuries James Harden demands a trade from the Nets and, uh, and so while uh, and so the, while the Nets are going through that, the 76ers are going through their own drama with a different player named Ben Simmons, mm. who hasn't, who didn't play at all last season. And uh, and like the thing that people point to the moment where he gave up uh, on the team is uh, he in the playoffs last season, there was a play where he had a wide open shot right under the the basket the only player coming towards him is like eight inches shorter than him and instead of going for a shot he passed the ball so so the Nets ended up trading james harden for ben simmons like straight up i mean there are some other players involved involved. but that was the big meat of the trade yeah Mm. yeah and and so like since then the nets go uh uh, go on to like not have a good season and they get uh, and they get swept first round of the playoffs and now both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are uh, reportedly asking for trades and they Ooh. are friends right <laughs> yeah like they they, homeboys, they yeah. came to the nets together and they were like we, uh, and they're like we want to play together oh and now they're so both ha- yeah but it's sad that they're now asking for tra- are they trying to get traded together no oh well, uh, okay okay th- cuz the thing is like they're both on max contracts, so trading two players on max contracts would just be super difficult. Like another, like whatever team they trade would essentially have to gut their whole team. Wow. Well, the thing is, like, isn't Kyrie asking for like a lot of money? And usually, I'm such an advocate for play- for paying people, but like after what he pulled, not playing in half of the games. So uh, so the thing is, I don't think he was asking for a whole lot of money, but like this off season, he uh, he had what's called a player option, where it's like he he could either like opt in to, uh, to the money he, he he's guaranteed to, or he he could become a free agent. And I think it's uh, like he wanted to go to a specific team where like because of their salary uh, and his stuff, he would get paid thirty million dollars less than his player option. So he's like. I'm going to take the money. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair. Uh, yeah, which I'm. Do you ever just stop and like think about that much money and just be like, imagine just someone making decisions like that. You're like, oh no, this would give me thirty million dollars less, so I'll go with the one that'll give me the thirty million more dollars that I want. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just as a decision to make, I'm just like, huh? What? Oh yeah, because like I, I always hate when people criticize athletes for going for money over winning a a, a, title. No one is better than that. No one. Yeah, because I'm, uh, yeah, because I'm like, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I would give up all that money for anything. Yeah. Oh, definitely not. No. Uh, yeah, because there, there's a different NBA player, Damian Lillard. Like he's been on the same team his whole uh, career, and uh, and basically they uh, they have never looked like a title contender. Like he's a great player. He's gonna be in the uh, Hall of uh, Fame, and uh, and people are like his legacy's gonna go down because he's uh, he's never come close to winning a title. He just signed an extension where like some some season down the future he's gonna get paid like sixty million dollars. I'm like. Yeah, I give him a title too. Like, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I, I wonder about that stuff sometimes with like big major decisions where it's like, do you go for glory, or do you go for extreme comfort in like just doing the thing you want to do? And it's like, if you are doing what you love, is there anything that like surpasses that? Really? Yeah. I, the only uh, the only thing I can see is like if a player is like on the team that's just bomb of the league their their entire yeah. career. I can see how like losing every night would make you feel, <laughs> feel like all right, let me go someplace else. I'll take a pay cut for it. Yeah. Well, that's like the in baseball, the Angels. There's two players who are like two of the best players maybe ever in the history of Major League Baseball, and they are on a team with people who like the three of us could probably be they are on such a bad that's they, hilarious yeah. they are every night doing like historic things and like there's this one guy shohei otani who pitches and hits he's like the first person to do that since oh, he's Babe Ruth. he's by <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know there are all these thirst accounts about him and they get like really intense there's one that's like his butt looks so good in blue and it's like every picture <laughs> of shohei otani wearing blue <laughs> Is blue just his uniform or? No, his uniform is usually red, but I think sometimes he wears a specialty uniform. That's Wait, did blue. you mean like when he's out and about in like civilian clothes? Is that what you meant? No, when he wears like a blue practice uniform. Oh, okay. Because okay. they have like road uniforms or practice uniforms. I see. Okay. Yeah. I'll find the thirst account. It's I, I follow. I, I'm not afraid yeah. to say I follow it. Yeah. He's a handsome fella. Yeah. Do you want a sip? A sip. Do you also get thirsty is what I'm saying. I <laughs> fucking hate you. I love the one. I love the I, I watch the moment of understanding in your face. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I sipped that into my brain like so I slowly. Saw it I was like, oh, God damn it. That's you said I, that like Chris sure just there. Oh, God. Oh, it. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas. Yes, Gabby. It must be so hard having balls. Well, actually, they're fairly loose. That's how like balls work in the sack is actually they're not like rock hard. It would be it would be very uncomfortable if they were rock hard. Um, otherwise, yeah. it is it is a little bit of a slog dealing with them because they get so hairy <laughs> and they do. But don't not, you know it? Not with. The amazing manscaped. manscaped Lucas manscaped is a revolution in Tell me about it. Shaving those ballsies. We got the manscaped. We got these little clippers. I'm Hell showing yeah. them right now on Ooh, screen. Ooh, that's so shiny. Oh, that's the that's the brand new one. But look at it. I'm going to be and I'm going to be very honest. I'm actually already a customer before Manscaped reached out to us. Before Manscaped reached out to us to be a sponsor. I am a user, and this is mine. Uh, it's not the most recent one. I think you have, like, the 3.0? I've got the, tr the Megatron new model. I've got the Nimbus yep. 2000. I've oh, got yeah. I've got, I've got the Manscaped fanny pack. Where you oh can pull wow! Out your goods. 
I've got the crop preserver, which is ball deodorant. You know, it's summer. Sometimes you need it. Oh, yeah. I've got the Manscaped Crop Reviver. Ooh. Uh, that's ball toner for when the ballsies get irritated. And or I've when your the- balls run out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the weed whacker for when your ears are growing weeds. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you know how it goes. So if you want to get in on this Manscaped revolution, you guys, go to manscaped.com and get 20% off with the discount code NOSY, N-O-S-Y. That's NOSY, N-O-S-Y, as in the podcast Two Nosy Meerkats, which you are listening to right now. Yes, this is our first sponsor. We're very, very happy to have them. If you wa- if you like the podcast and you want to support, please interact with our sponsors. That's the best way that you can support us, your beloved mama and papa meerkats. We love you. Get those balls clean. Get those balls clean. Be like Lukey, because Lukey uses Manscaped. Be like Gabby, because she doesn't have balls. But short of that, use Manscaped. But she pretends she has them every time she uses her new Manscaped trimmer. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wish I had balls for this. That would be so nice. I mean, yeah. my ball toner, I'm like, oh, They're God, very good they're... at not nicking the skin. They're very good at it. They're good. very good. Good. That is Wonderful actually so Wonderful skin safe important. technology. Very important. Anyone with balls knows how, how fragile the skin can be, and you need to take care of them. You need to trust a company that knows how delicate they are. Manscaped is the one. Can I ask, did you ever, uh, did you ever uh, play sports? And if so, which one? Yeah, uh, so growing uh, 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 up, like, I played a lot of so- uh, soccer and basketball, mostly in rec leagues. <laughs> then middle school, like, I was on an AAU basketball team, mm-hmm. and, like, we weren't good. Oh, no. <laughs> no, because the, th- the main thing was we were just a very short team. Like, I was never an extremely tall kid, but I played center sometimes. Fair. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, That must uh, mean you were good. Yeah. The thing is, like, so on that uh, that team, because, like, I ex- played, like, exclusively front court uh, stuff, I got good at, like, those uh, skills, like, re- uh, like rebounding interior de- uh, defense. I got good at that. But then in high school, I try out for my high school team, and they're like, because of your height, you can only be a guard. And oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so like my ball handling was nowhere good enough to make the team. Lucas's oh. ball handling is really good. <laughs> but uh, only off the court. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the court, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I, when I played basketball, I played in like elementary school, and I was really, I was taller than everyone in elementary school. <laughs> and then I oh. never grew again. And oh, everybody oh grew God. above me. Yeah. But I was a really good defender because I was scrappy and mean. And I didn't give a fuck about the rules. You were petty. Yeah, you said yeah. passive aggressive things. Four to fouls a game. Get him off yeah, there. Four yeah. fouls a game and that fifth one at the end if I really needed it. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't I wasn't huge into sports, but I I was actually a very good hockey goalie. Well, uh, like uh, I, would just, I have very quick hands, so I was like, I would just, I would get, I would get it every time. You I never are spindly. Let, oh, yeah. I'm very spindly. I'm very twitchy as well. I've got twi- fast twitch muscle fibers. Goalie is the anime nerd of hockey players. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense actually. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it does. Yeah, I played goalie in soccer. So yeah. it, it's like I was, uh, and like I was fa- uh, fairly good uh, guys for like a rec level uh, uh, thing. Yeah, I always goalie's the toughest. Goalies get. Do you remember years ago there was that one goalie? I think he was a U.S. goalie, and he missed like a really easy shot. Soccer. Yeah, soccer. Okay. Um, and like they, they, the other team won the game because he missed this really easy shot, and like nobody ever forgave him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, a lot of soccer fans are also just super intense. Oh, <laughs> they are. Well, I watched the uh, the Euros last year. Last oh my summer. god. That was intense because, like, obviously, I was rooting for uh, England, and they lost against uh, Italy in the uh, final penalties, I think. And there's this one amazing player called Marcus Rashford, and he is someone who, like, he's campaigned to have like uh, to bring uh, school lunches to poor kids because, like, he relied on that a lot as a kid. He has a he's a uh, MBE from the Queen for it. He's he's a wonderful, wonderful person, but he he fumbled his shot 
and a lot of people were saying like racist things to him afterwards and it was just it was just a really sad moment where like a really dark racist side of the UK came out after ah uh, who would have guessed who would have guessed yeah, the, <laughs> the dark racist side of yeah, the UK yeah the, yeah uh, yeah the country that invades uh, others for spices and then doesn't use them yeah <laughs> That's very true. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But it was, uh, it was, it was tough. That was, uh, that was rough. Because you also just feel so bad for him because he's a great player. But it was just this one moment where it just wasn't his best. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Because like there are definitely like uh, times in sports where it's, uh, where it's like a uh, a player ma uh, makes a bad play and like all uh, and like all these people are sending them death threats. It's like it's just a game. Like yeah. Uh, uh, there was another player. I don't remember his name. But he was like 18. He's so young oh, and ever, and he's also black. And like people were saying awful things, like go back where you can. It was just, and I felt so protective. I was like, don't you fucking touch him. Yeah. I, I was, I felt, I was, uh, I, mm, I hated that. Yeah, I, uh, I will say like because uh, because like I went to a college where uh, where sports were big. The student sections have said some really fucked up shit to like really? n uh, 19, 20 year old kids. Yeah, yeah, because like. Honestly, the worst of it. So at my school, the men's soccer team was really good, and there was like there was a club that was essentially their whole purpose was being fan clubs of uh, fans of the soccer team, and they like were, groupies. Uh, not entirely groupies. I don't think any of them got that close, but just <laughs> <laughs> but just like uh, super fans. And so the, uh, at my school on the uh, on the soccer field, the student sections were right behind the goals. Yeah, and so uh, and so like they. Uh, Every game, they would look up some personal information about the other team's goalie and just shout it at Whoa. points during the game. What kind of personal information? I, like, your favorite color is blue! Oh, I wish that was it. No, it, it was like Wikipedia information. You were born in Great Neck! <laughs> oh, no, they do way more research than oh, Wikipedia. Oh, I know. I, I, I was thinking about no, it. No, it, it's stuff like, uh, uh, I've heard them shout, like, the, uh, their girlfriend's phone number, their home address. Uh, so, like, like doxing. It, yeah. Not like, like, personal life, your pansexual. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> awful. Yeah. <laughs> you ever join in? I'm now I'm ashamed to say yes. <laughs> oh no! No, no cause uh, like yeah. Cancel no, him. Cancel Belton. <laughs> Cancel Belton. If I get canceled, there are other people I'm taking down with me. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's probably. That's fair. That's you can good, always yeah. take me down with you. Uh, yeah, no, cause uh, uh, cause like I have a friend who. Uh, Who's like uh, really into it? He was never one of the dudes who did the re uh, research, but it's uh, uh, but it's like you're at the game, you're at, uh, having fun, you're uh, you join in on the like the usual chance throughout the game, and uh, uh, and uh, and then uh, and then suddenly you're uh, there, someone's yelling out numbers, and you just repeat those numbers. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> that yeah, that is understandable. I could yeah. definitely put myself in your position. I probably did the yeah. same thing. The, yeah, the, like that was definitely the worst. I, uh, oddly enough, at Mom and Mentality is real. Yeah, I like basketball. Uh, I like basketball games. I think the worst thing that was shouted was "You are ugly." All right, that's not so bad. That's what that's you can deal with that. And yeah. you, well, you know, Yogi Berra was once called ugly by a fan, and he turned around. And he said, "I don't hit with my face." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Yogi Berra had amazing. Quotes. Yogi Berra had some good ones. He yeah. said, "If you see a fork in the road, take it." <laughs> Ninety percent of the game is half mental. That's another favorite Yogi Berra. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. That's why. Uh, that's why, like some athletes, their specialty is just trash talk. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. If you My listen to CC Sabathia's podcast, oh, he's a baseball pitcher. That's like <laughs> you're like, oh, I don't listen to a, a podcast of a person who does something I have no understanding of. I understand that. Uh, okay, unrelated to the world of sports, but my favorite trash talker in the world is Fifty Cent. He once made a whole ass video that he posted on Instagram. I, I'm killing my, I'm kicking myself because I can't. I'm killing myself. I'm killing myself. I, I'm kicking myself because I, rem, I can't remember who it was. I think it was another rapper who he was trying to make it seem like that rapper couldn't read. So he pulled out a Dr. Seuss book, read it word for word. And he was like, beat that. Oh, <laughs> oh I, re I remember that. It. I you know that, what I'm talking yeah, about. No, I think it was like Floyd Mayweather. That's yeah. it. How do they even That's know it. each other? I don't know, I don't but know. it was Celebrities hilarious. just know each other somehow. It's it was so weird. hilarious. Yeah. It was so funny.
<laughs> 50 Cent is, he's so smart and he's so like Machiavellian and how he like will strategize to how to sh shit talk someone. It's amazing. <laughs> That's a word. Cent. I know he is, but 50 Cent isn't Machiavellian. Yes, he is. 50 Cent is not planning the demise of other rappers. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but if you put that much strategy into an IG video, that's Do you think that's, 50 that's Cent is Machiavellian? No, I don't no of th course not. I don't think he's that. I, th I think he'll trash talk like anyone else. No, but he thought about it ahead of time. He prepared the book. Do you think Machiavellian is just someone who prepares for something ahead of time? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the thing is... For, uh, this was against Floyd Mayweather, who's a professional boxer. I, I don't, yeah. th I don't think anyone's expecting like high in uh, intelligence. Well, you say that, but Mike Tyson is very, very intelligent. He's really dialed in. Oh yeah, he, like, dialed in to what? He no, but he's he's very spiritual. He likes to reflect on how he affects other people, how he's grown as a person. Have you did you see his one man show? No, it was oh, yeah. outstanding. Okay, so Mike Tyson, no, I, expect, I loved it. Mike Tyson, I expect he's funny that from. Too. But not Floyd Mayweather. Just, Maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, just, uh, just like seeing Floyd Mayweather in in in, in interviews, I, uh, he seems the kind of person that is about fighting and nothing else. I see. Okay. It's Fair. So Machiavellian of him when he prepares for his fights before yeah. they happen. <laughs> it's so not Machiavellian to just go in and be like, "I'm fighting." But I'm sorry, Machiavellian <laughs> is not just preparing for, you don't go to a job interview and you're like, all right, I did some research, call me Machiavelli. <laughs> no, but that's not like with like malicious intent. Well, if you're trying to the, make it seem like someone doesn't know how to read, that's malicious intent. What, what if the job, it's one of those like group interviews where you're with uh, other people and you do research on the other people you're interviewing with to That's take a little Machiavellian. Yeah. yeah, for there sure. That's go. Machiavellian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if it's, a group interview and then you get the job and then you become the boss and then you conduct a group interview and oh. then you still research everyone else in the group and you pit them against each other to play sick little games until one of them dies. That's Game of Thrones. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Game of Thrones, Hunger Games. Like it's, it's been done before. Get more original, Gabby. Dare I say I'm Machiavellian. <laughs> it's very Machiavellian. What uh, I... I know everything about you too, and I'm gonna use it against you too. Oh yeah, what do you know? What do you know? I make that noise sometimes. You're absolutely right. Lucas Arnold is a little cuck bitch. That's what I know. And Belton. I prefer bitch cuck. I know what you prefer. I looked it up. And Belton Delane Facey is a really nice guy. A cutie patootie. Yeah. A cutie patoo. Yeah. Is that how you get me to fight someone? Because it's kind of working. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I'm not. I am not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do wait, do you have? Oh, this is a, I have a I have an interesting question for Belton. So Gabby and I have sort of not really, but we sort of have like a nemesis that we've chosen in the celebrity in the celeb sphere who we want mm. to outlive. Is there anyone you would be really mad if they lived longer than you in the world? Um. I, uh, I Mine is Chloe Grace Moretz. Mine's Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> yeah, Machine Gun Kelly. I get. I'm not. Uh, well, I, I hate Chloe, Chloe Grace Moretz. I assigned him Chloe Grace Moretz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why this happened. Uh, I but know. I accepted Chloe, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz with open arms. I was like, yeah, I want, I want to live longer <laughs> yeah, than you. Yeah, no, no, off the top of my head, because like I, uh, I generally don't keep like a running shit list of, uh, of celebrities. That, Actually, no. Now that I think about it, Gwen Paltrow. Like, uh, <laughs> great yeah, answer. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But great like, I know she she's significantly older than me, so like odds are pretty good I'll uh, live her. But anytime like I hear a uh, talk, I'm like, please stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see um uh Love and Goop or whatever that show is on Netflix? No, I haven't. Love is I, Goop. Love is Goop. Like Love is Blind. No, yeah. I, uh, no, I had a sense goop it would be is Goop is Goop is, is Goop. 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 Is, is goop. goop. <laughs> no, I was like, I had a sense if I watched that, it would be it, it would be like a waste of however many hours I would feel less intelligent and I'd mm. be mad myself. So I did. Yeah. That's so fair. Have you she ever might live till 500, though. She may, but have you seen the video of her talking about like what she eats in her day? She just doesn't eat. <laughs> I, I remember. It's like I eat an almond and a square of dark chocolate and I sniff a leaf of kale. It's like. Yep. It's, yeah. it's literally That's, that. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. 
Uh, oh my god, that's uh, that's like I remember one time I was watching White Swap way back then, and there was this woman that uh, that was just like, plants get energy energy from the sun; they'll need extra food. So I believe humans can do the same thing. And so she was just like stand on her porch in front of the sun for like an hour each day and be like, "This is sustaining me." I'm like, "You're not healthy." He's like, "No, no, 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 no." She would stand in front of a plant. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious that is uh that's that is funny yeah uh, yeah and it's, uh, and it's like i want uh, part of me wonders it's like would she ever just die of starvation because of that because like if she did i want to read her obituary because uh, because like, like she died as she lived yeah. <laughs> <laughs> under the sun <laughs> yeah she, she melted <laughs> with gorgeously tanned skin. Yeah, <laughs> gorgeous. She melted, but she looked great doing it. It was. Oh, and God. you dip your finger in the puddle that is her. Oh it's actually God. it becomes self tanner. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's how it's made? <laughs> self guys, bronzer. never buy self tan. Never yeah. buy bronzer. Yeah. You can guarantee it is somebody's organs. Yeah, or if you just want to save money, melt your friends. <laughs> your friends cancel your friend cancel belton <laughs> melt your friends oh my god oh my god well i've loved this very much you know I who mean, else would love this kind of advice hit it our listeners nice belton, are you ready to give listeners the kind of advice that they can only ever get from belton delane facey oh, yeah. i'm ready to give it i'm not sure if it's gonna be good advice <laughs> Oh yeah, we no. don't give good oh, advice. Yeah. No, because no, like I have, uh, I have a thing where it's like, uh, uh, if I, uh, if I need like to run things by my uh, my friend or something, instead of just at, uh, being like, I need some advice, I'll be like, hey, bad idea consultant, should I do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Bad right. idea consultant. Let's go. All right, I got, I got one pulled up. All right, so hi, hi, humorous hosts. I'm a 16 year old NB who's recently found your podcast, and I've been struggling a lot with a weird hyper-focus on negative comments. Whether it's a video about trans buds, or a post about ADHD, or even just something about what my loved ones might be going through, I always find myself scrolling through the comments looking for negativity. Mm. Maybe it's just because I've only recently started to come to terms with my identity, and it's never like I'm happy after, and it's never like I'm happy after uh, reading them. Is this odd, or just the infamous doom scrolling? Mm. Mm. I think well, one it's you're describing the experience at least with comments you're describing the experience every single person has every single person uh like will go past all the positivity and look for the negative one and fo and hyper focus on that yeah I, I definitely feel like that's a big internet th uh, thing yes, where it's like it, absolutely. Feel, it, it definitely uh, there are definitely times it feels like people think it's just cool to shit on people uh, uh, like and, uh, and like I don't understand like criticizing someone's uh, idea, but it's like every, uh, like especially on TikTok, every so often it feels like so uh, uh, someone goes viral for just doing their thing, and people just sh uh, uh, shit on them for no reason. Oh yeah, there yeah. there was actually a moment recently where I'm gonna uh, uh, abstain from some names. I can give you an, a name afterward, but um, there's a comedian who got a very big opportunity, a great set that was done online and it got a lot of great support from people that we knew, but also other people that saw the set online. He had a great set. And, uh, but then I saw, and I left a comment. I was like, Oh my God, this is so great. You're killing it. And then someone left a really mean comment saying, I don't know why you got this opportunity. It's clear that you're just an open mic or you don't deserve to get on this stage with, with, what you've done thus far. This is not good comedy. It was just, it, but it was really pinpointed. It was really, really specific. And I responded to the comment uh, because I was a verified user on YouTube. Not hey, baby, hey. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to draw some attention to it. And I said, uh, this comedian got on that stage because of their hard work. And you ended up in this uh, comment section because you don't have that. Mm. Oh, and then <laughs> Shit, yeah. the person who actually turns out that was a the mean commenter. That was a burner account of a comedian. I personally know I will not. And I, and I will, and I have not said the name of this person and I won't even say it to you guys. And that's yeah. for real because wow. I want to, because this person reached out to me saying, um, I just want to let you know, Lucas, that was me. I feel so disgusting. 
I haven't been able to eat all day because I feel so wretched and I feel so ashamed of myself. Um, I, I've deleted the comment. I just, I, I haven't been in a good space mentally. I was in a really bad space when I left that comment. I don't know why I did it. I was jealous, all this other stuff. I feel disgusted. And I was like, I personally forgive you. I don't think you should reach out to the person whose stand up set this was. I don't think that'll do any good. Just in the future, take better stock of your emotional state and don't react on it. Any, if you want to talk to me, I'm open to talk to you, but I'm really glad that you reached out to me. I think you're really brave for doing this. Just don't do this again. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. I won't do it again. But yeah, it's just, it's no one leaves a comment like that if they're doing well. That's that's the most important thing to remember yeah. is that no one does that in good standing. Yeah, I, I think that's what it com uh, uh, comes down to because, I mean, we're, uh, we're all creative people. I think it's... It, and I think it's real easy to look at like someone who's out of place where we want to be, uh, be, and if we don't like their stuff, uh, think like, oh, they don't, uh, they don't deserve it. I'm better uh, uh, than them. But it's like it, we we have to remember like anyone who, uh, who who's up there is like they did a lot of hard work to get there, and Absolutely. it didn't happen overnight. And uh, it's also no, one, especially in stand up, no one's gonna sustain a career in comedy if you don't have the goods. You may get an opportunity uh, through dumb luck, but you're not going to sustain a career unless you are putting the work in. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I, I really believe that. And yeah, I feel like if, you, if you're like, oh, this person isn't going to like sustain a career, just like, all right, let them. Let's see how it pans out. Yeah, and then it's don't like, like, yeah, don't. Shit yeah, and talk. then you also have to remember that art, uh, that art is subjective. So it's like, absolutely, ju just because you don't like someone, it's like if they have that audience if they, uh, uh, and they're doing these big things. Obviously, some people like them. And, yeah, uh, and yeah. it's like ju uh, just because you're not one of those people, do uh, and it doesn't reflect poorly on you or them. Can I ask? Is there for for either of you? Is there a comedian who is really popular? who you understand why they are successful and you get why their comedy resonates, but it just doesn't resonate with you. Sebastian Malcolm. Maniscalco? Ma Ma Malcolm, Malcolm and Sebastian Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm in the in <laughs> Sebastian Malcolm. Sebastian Malcolm in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Sebastian Maniscalco. That's fine. Yeah. For me, uh, Eliza Schlesinger. Mm. I get why she has an audience. I see exactly why it resonates with her audience, but it just doesn't resonate with yeah. me. What yeah. about you? Uh, I feel like for uh, for me is Bo Burnham because because uh, like understandable, I, understandable. Yeah, because like I I think I think he's good at what he does, but like I uh, but like I uh, I just. Uh, I feel like for whatever reason, I can't w uh, watch him for long periods of time. I couldn't watch Inside in one shot. I still haven't finished it because I, I just got so depressed watching it. And everyone's, I remember everyone saying, like, oh, it's amazing. I'm like, how are you guys watching this and not feeling so horrible that you need to turn it off? Yeah, because yeah. like, I, I do that. No, because I kind of uh, felt the same uh, same thing because like watching it, I was just like, uh, I think his shot composition is great. I like a lot of the uh, uh, the songs i think he it is was unbelievably really talented yeah anyone yeah. who sees him knows he is unbelievably talented yeah for yeah. sure but continue uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, but it's like i i uh, i know it's like all these great things uh, watching it but, uh, but i'm uh, like i need to take a break right now right yeah i also like just returning to the idea of negative comments i feel like one of the reasons, like, we started the final segment we do, which I know it's usually a surprise, but you've definitely heard the podcast, is, like, there is so much focus on negativity, and I think it's because it's very hard to take in compliments because they're often disingenuous, I think. So we, like, I think both of us wanted to start this idea of, like, obviously we don't invite people on this podcast we don't like, right? So the end self-perception corner is never going to be, like, we perceive you as someone really terrible who sucks in the world and who's a terrible person. But compl I, I like get, like seeing someone in a hyper specific way and being like, these are the reasons I like you. Mm. And I feel like negative comments sometimes really resonate because they seem so specific. But you just have to remember that a lot of negativity, because it's not actually from a good place, it really isn't specific. Mm. Like mm. I saw on um, Claire Olshansky, who's an amazing comic. Mm. They shout posted a reel. Shout out to Claire Olshansky. They posted a reel and some asshole guy was like, what do you, what do you like? A IPAs and don't shave your toes. And it's like, 
are you just saying that because they're non-binary? Because this has nothing to do with their joke. Or is their that personality. a non-binary stereotype? No, oh, they it's... all eat, they all drink IPAs and don't shave the toes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the thing about like, oh, you're a liberal hipster or whatever, and this is what oh, okay. all liberal hipsters do. But it was just the dumbest shit that was so not about anything that the real was about. So yeah. it's important to remember sometimes with negative comments that like, it's not always true that positive comments are general and meaningless, and negative yeah. comments are specific so true. It's often yeah. the opposite. A lot of compliments, I feel like, are really pointed and true. Yeah. And negative comments are really out of nowhere. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's very beautiful. good. Pull another one up. All right. So we got a longer story. Hell yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got someone who's telling us a story. Nice. And so they want us to comment on the story at the end. Um, I wanted to introduce the characters first. There was my friend Patrick, a girl, Adriel, another guy, Mark, and I. It's freshman year of high school, and I am 100% the band nerd guy. Adriel, on the other hand, is one of the most popular girls in school. Mark is a rising football player playing varsity as a freshman. <laughs> My friend Patrick is just Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Nice. <laughs> For the longest time, I had a crush on Adriel, as well as half the guys in my class. Uh, I think they mean to say... Oh, half the guys half in the class guy also had a crush on Adriel. Yeah. Okay, okay. However, I decided to shoot my shot and ask her to homecoming. Patrick, who, this is my editorial note, is just Patrick, is hyping me up from the other side of the lunchroom, and I go ask her. At first, she didn't see me with the huge embarrassing sign that I had made with Sharpie, but eventually her best friend pointed it out. I was prepared for failure, but she actually said yes. I ran back to my lunch table, and it was the most lightheaded I have ever felt. Aww. Flash forward to the dance. It all seemed a little weird, and she danced maybe one dance with me, and that's it. Feeling defeated, I went to an after party with her at my cousin's house. I knew it was over when she asked another guy to sit with her when we watched a scary movie as a group. I moved on and never looked back. Two years later, out of the blue, Patrick came up to me and said, Oh, hey, by the way, remember Adriel freshman year at homecoming? While you were practicing with the band for a homecoming football game, her and Mark had sex in the shed where they keep the pole vaulting poles. It completely blew me away, and I found out the only reason Adriel said yes so was so that another guy that she didn't like wouldn't ask her. <gasps> kind of sucked, but at that point I was pretty over it, so it was just a little funny to me. There's never any bad blood between any party involved. It just led to some awkward situations. My school's small, so senior year it was only Mark and I in the calculus class. Nothing came out of the situation, and it always just hung in the back of my mind whenever I talked to him. Oh, and that's it. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Although one thing I have to say, like, uh, so I pole vaulted in uh, in high school. Did and, you? Yeah. So you were there <laughs> <laughs> in the room where it happened. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I I'm just uh, I'm just thinking uh, like if they were able to just walk in there, this school is very reckless with their poles. <laughs> 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 No, because also like my uh, my. That's school, an amazing phrase. <laughs> yeah, because my school also like we, uh, they didn't spend a whole lot of money on uh, on pole vaulting. Like uh, 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 like we uh, like for all the pole vaulters that were there, it's like we uh, we essentially have one for everyone. If you uh, uh, left over, other school uh, schools like at track meets would have like a whole array of poles for uh, uh, for everyone. It's like we locked the ones we had up and. Uh, and it's like, what is this school doing? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that's the best takeaway fair, you can yeah. have. Yeah, I feel I feel like their uh, their only defense is that like each pole is uh, is like 20, 25 feet uh, feet long. So they're, uh, so they're like, no one's just gonna put this in a car and drive off with it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Oh yeah, there's no need to lock, but you could tie them up to the top of your car. Yeah, you could. It just Imagine makes it difficult to drive. Vaulting. Yeah, but then yeah, if the car crashed, it would fall. <laughs> just hit a speed bump too fast. I was imagining the movie Cars, like Lightning McQueen, like. Oh <laughs> yes. It's like all right, so that's how that works in that. Universe. Using a wing mirror as like a holster for the pole. <laughs> I also realized Patrick is complicit in this story. It's all his fault. Yeah, and Patrick yeah. will have qualities that arise in due course. Yeah, like uh, 
Like, did Patrick know about it the whole time? That's what I think. I think Patrick did know about it the whole time. Patrick's a little schemer. A little yeah. bit. A little bit. He's not just Patrick. There's more to the story. Machiavellian. Machiavellian. Yeah. Machiavellian Patrick. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, but I mean, I can see being uh, being for. Uh, uh, being 14 at the time depending on when he found out like i could see like if he's hyping up his friend to, uh, to ask a girl out and then he finds out l- uh, later that that's why she said it. yes i could see like at 14 being like i don't think i should tell him <laughs> yeah i guess i want to see if you're patrick i want you to write in with your side of the story yeah yeah give us your dirt uh, yes when patrick find please out? write in I also want Adriel's side of the story because I want Adriel. Adriel, sure. Yeah. I want to know what it's like to go up to what to or to like accept someone's extravagant promposal because you don't want someone else to ask you out. And I want to know about this whirlwind romance with Mark. Mark, who by the yeah. way is a calculus head, he likes calculus. Yeah, yeah she gave yeah. him some numbers to work with. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay one more yep uh yeah all right here's uh here's another one i was listening to an episode where you guys talked about the first time you watched porn Ooh. and i just wanted to interject mine in here i was probably like in middle school and i was a bit of a conspiracy i was in a bit of a conspiracy phase where i thought the fbi was tracking browsing history and would tell my parents if i looked up porn or anything the fbi so, would tell your parents that's hilarious <laughs> I, but it, that is so understandable as well yeah. Yeah. i think i definitely yeah, yeah, i was yeah, yeah. like <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's like yeah. you suddenly get a letter in the, ma- uh, the mail from the FBI. It's just like, here, here's your search history specifically. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the FBI was tracking, browsing it, and would tell my parents if I looked up porn or anything. So I was very much not intending to look up anything of that nature. What I was intending to do was try to figure out why the fuck Kim Kardashian is famous. Oh my because God. I could not for the life of me figure it out. And no one would tell me the answer. Or they just seemed <laughs> to not know either. Lo and behold, it's because of a sex tape. But I only found this out after trying to research and clicking the link that sent me to the video. And so I just see some dude ramming his cock down Kim K's throat. Needless to say, I was very surprised and kind of traumatized, but also rather intrigued. So yes, I watched the video for a bit. But after that, it was a while before I went searching for anything porn related or Kardashian related. <laughs> <laughs> I love that there are kids young enough to not know that's how Kim K got famous. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I uh, I like it. Uh, to okay. be fair, it's not something you're told about uh, oh, like, yeah, right like, off the bat. Uh, oh yeah, because the family makes sure to not bring it up that much. Yeah, <laughs> they're really good at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, it's like I like when uh, with like for certain celebrities, it's like depending on your age, they're famous for different reasons. Yes. Yeah, Very that's true. true. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think the biggest example I can think of is OJ Simpson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now he's famous for his Twitter presence. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, what a great Twitter. That guy's a legend. Did you see the video he posted where he's like, I can't believe that Roe versus Wade got overturned. We need to let women do whatever they want with their bodies. <laughs> yeah, like, Have you seen that? I saw that. <laughs> It's insane. Right. Women and can do whatever like, yeah. they want except live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what everyone said. Yeah. It's yeah, but no, because because uh, like I I'm not sure you guys uh, uh, experienced this, but like whenever I hear like how big of a celebrity and how likable he was before uh, uh, before yes, that yeah, case, yeah, yeah. it's so hard to believe. Yeah, I know because it's all you can think about now. But yeah. he was in those Naked Gun movies. He was like he's, he's a cool dude before yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a reason I think why everybody in the world watched that trial, and it's because. I wonder who the equivalent of that would be today. Who, like, would mm. be, like, if there was some mega... Would it be, like... Taika Waititi. Because <laughs> he's universally beloved. Yeah, Everyone loves he, him. he is. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, who else is, like, really beloved. Yeah, because, uh, like, with Taika Waititi, I'm not sure, like, if you mention him outside of film circles that everyone instantly knows That's who fair. What about Danny DeVito? You just Danny mentioned DeVito. Yeah, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny DeVito, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, well, I don't know if she's this beloved. She's not universally. Depending on the crime, I could see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want her to go to jail? 
I, I mean, I feel like at some point she's just going to go to jail for, like, medical fraud or something. Like, I feel like she's no going to make some claim about Goop. She, no, actually, I'm pretty sure she's already made claims about Goop, uh, Goop that just aren't uh, founded in any sort of, like, studies or facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't sell $75 vitamin B that you can get at, you know, Walgreens for, like, six bucks. But I guess yeah. you can if you're Gwyneth Paltrow. You're going to yeah. outlive her. Yeah, you're, you're gonna outlive her this is you're our gonna new do goal. it yeah. you're gonna do it yeah. also but, just one thing to address, address in, in, in that submission ray j is an accomplished r&b singer he's way more than just some guy <laughs> he is he's not some more, guy ramming his cock down her he throat. is more than his penis unlike <laughs> me now <laughs> but now we uh we are coming towards the end of the podcast where we talk where we ask you what I'm sure you're already aware is how you believe you are perceived by other people. And then we'll tell you how we actually perceive you. Right. This is self-perception corner. Yeah. So I know like when I'm first meeting people, I am uh, I feel like I come off as quiet because, uh, uh, because like, I don't know. Uh, in uh, I feel like in new environments, I tend to uh, just like observe more than participate. So, yeah. uh, uh, I feel like as I get to know people, uh, uh, people, I'd like to think that it, they know it's like, oh, I'm not just staring off into space the entire time. I'm actually like listening and paying att and attention to yeah. things. But like, I uh, like the past few years, I have uh, like become more conscious about uh, about like tr uh, trying to like talk to strangers and start co uh, uh, conversations uh, uh, like that, especially with my bio language, uh, like because I know. Yo, what? Like, Sorry. Body language. Oh, body. Yeah. I thought you said yeah. bile language. I was like, what? <laughs> this kid's a scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, keep going. Gwyneth Paltrow's got nothing uh, on yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. So, like, sometimes I'll notice is, like, if I keep my hands closed or just yeah. keep them in my pocket, mm -hmm. I try to avoid that. But, uh, uh, but like, I, I feel like one, uh, once I get to know uh, uh, someone, like, I uh, I feel like I'm still, uh, I'm still more of a, uh, a listener, but become, like, more active participant in the conversation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like you've always been that way? Like since you were a kid, you were like more of an observer. Um, I feel uh, I feel like that's changed over uh, you know, over time because I because uh, I feel like in middle school and high uh, high school I uh, I started noticing it's like oh some kids are picking up things that I'm not picking up so I should like <laughs> mm. yeah that sounds nice yeah. wait like what sort of stuff I uh, uh, like uh. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember uh, specific ex uh, examples. I I think the one uh, the one that like uh, that like occur uh, occurred to me for, uh, first is like in middle sc uh, school tour uh, at some uh, at some like while my teachers uh, got uh, uh, got pregnant during the year and uh, and you didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, because. Uh, I, uh, I did until she <laughs> announced it because uh, uh, like she, uh, at some point she was just like, all right, to address this because I, uh, I know everyone's uh, t uh, talking about me and, and saying I'm getting f fat. I'm like, I have, uh, wait, people are talking about this? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. You were like, I will never miss a pregnant teacher again. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, no, it was funny because the year before a different t teacher I, I, I got pregnant dur uh, during, the, uh, during the year and uh, and like all of uh, and like all of us in the class noticed and like had a conversation of, about it. And then one day she was out, uh, she was out of class, and so she and the teacher just offhandedly mentioned it's just like, yeah, uh, and it's just like, yeah, she's been throwing up a lot, which is bad because you know she's pregnant. And one of my friends in the class just goes, she's fr she's pregnant. Like, <laughs> and, we, and we all just made jokes about him for the rest of the, the day. So That's I was just like, oh man, I'm that kid now. Yeah, I yeah. Got you, yeah. Um, I, for one, Belton, think you're very funny. And I'm I'm curious, like, hearing this about you, like, how you got into stand-up. I will get into that in a second, because, like, I feel like when I first met you, like, you did kind of slip under my radar at first as, like, kind of a quiet person who I didn't really, like, necessarily, like, like, I did. I don't know that I got to know you within the first couple times that we met. But then, like, Honestly, seeing you on stage is where, or like during like the weird Zoom mic that I used to run, <laughs> like uh, that's when I feel like I got to know more of your perspective. And I just think you like think about things in a really kind of like roundabout, interesting way where like I kind of never know what you're going to say next. And it's always something very like compassionate and well thought out, but it's also very quick. So I, I'm, 
I'm curious where like you you made the move from kind of like un maybe like an observant kid to observing kid who's shy to like stand up comic. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, so like the first time I really did stand up was in college. It's like. Uh, 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 so like I got into screenwriting first, and I yeah. uh, and I mostly wrote comedies. And at some point, someone to, uh, uh, told me he's like, "Oh, if you want to write comedy, you should try stand up." So uh, uh, so I did, and I uh, uh, and like I was definitely much more introverted in college than I am now. So, uh, uh, but I think it was uh, uh, it was nice to uh, to just kind of uh, like st uh, to just kind of like stand up perform. Uh, or perform my stuff and it's like it was just rely on me i didn't have to worry about uh, like t uh, talking with other people in the uh, in the moment or like or like trying to like bounce off of everyone like you would have to do in sketch or improv yeah yeah uh, but yeah i just i just kind of stuck with it and like it uh, it really helps with writing i like now i'm in screenwriting groups i'm like a anyone who says they want to write comedy i'm like you should gain some experience in some form of live performance comedy yeah absolutely absolutely and i think i think that's really like that and it the skills like kind of transfer over but i think that like honestly screenwriting is harder than stand up i think I don't know if you agree. Well, you definitely yeah. don't get a vibe check on it as a, as immediately as you do stand. Oh yeah, God, you, yeah, uh, yeah. That's uh, that's definitely the uh, the big thing, especially because like ma uh, making short films, especially when I'm di directing them, it's like by the time by the time I'm having actors re uh, read them, I'm like, I'm not confident this is still funny just because I've read it over so many times. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah so generally, when actors read it over, they bring like new life into it. It's like, all right, this sounds good again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean, like, I feel like I'm a screenwriter first, so I, uh, so I like it more. But then all, uh, also, like, growing up, I always knew I had a speech impediment and like stand up that it made me super aware of that. Especially because during college, I went to speech therapy for uh, uh, for a bit, where it's like at that point, I didn't think my stutter was th that bad. But then they uh, they told me like over time, I essentially like developed other verbal tics to uh, try and cover up for it, and they Whoa. pointed all uh, all that out. They're just like, yeah, you take a lot of long pauses. You uh, you'll just repeat words uh, 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 over and over, and uh, and it, and other stuff. And I'm like. I thought everyone just did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had a, before I actually give him, I did a similar, not with speech, but with reading, where I I only found out a few years ago that I had a thing called convergence insufficiency, which is where, like, there are muscles surrounding your eyes that make them point right, make them point left. Mm -hmm. and so the muscles that make them converge on an object, say a book, for me, they were never as strong as they should have been. So I had to expend a lot more energy just to keep them on like the written word. Otherwise mm. I would go into double vision. Oh, and so I, because I had so little energy left over to take it, I had to go word by word. I thought that's what everyone did. And I had no idea why everyone else was reading so much faster than I was until I found out very recently that apparently people take in groups of words at a time. They just yeah. sort of like scan the page and it just gets in. And I was like, how the fuck does that work? Yeah, yeah. It made no sense to me until like I was challenged to try to take in three words at a time instead of just one word at a time. And for the first time in my life, sort of like pictures appeared in my head from the book and I nearly cried. It makes it sound wow. like you did the marshmallow challenge, though, where you're like, how many words can I take in my mouth at once? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, oh, that's so beautiful, though. just just yeah. that experience of like, wait, no one, no one else does this. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, this sort of habit that I've built over time to compensate. It's yeah, it's uh, it's a wild thing to realize. Yeah. Because uh, uh, like I never re uh, realized that because because uh, like one thing that, uh, that they pointed out is like using uh, filler words like like and uh, and I remember gr uh, growing up, it's like. So my mom, like, she understood I have a stutter. She just didn't really know how to treat it. And treat it like, she, like she definitely tr uh, tried. But I re remember th uh, things like when I had to give a speech for class, I would, uh, I would practice, and she, she would just point out anytime I use a, f uh, a filler word and just be like, "You need to stop doing that." But I, 
I wasn't aware I was entirely yeah. Yeah. doing that and just That's kept throwing wild. me off. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. Well, for me, for saying like how I proceed you, like I probably similar to Gabby, I was like, oh yeah, Belton's like a very quiet dude, but nice dude. But then like over time I realized how like pinpointed your stand-up material was, especially when it was wasn't fully formed yet, but it was still such a specific but good angle like it's like your pokemon balls bit oh, yeah. i love so much yeah, I love that, one. that i'm not gonna spoil it for you because that's your bit and you're gonna make a lot of money with it one day but <laughs> for real though it's such a good but i was but you were always so creative and left field in everything that you did and like just such a solid very reliable and kind person like are you a fan of hunter hunter the anime no no you're not okay well, what I was going to say is not going to be useful, but I was going to say that your Nen type would be you're an enhancer, which okay, means... Okay, Megan the Stallion. <laughs> yeah. Megan gets it. Hey, hit me up. Megan, um, come on the pod. <laughs> hit me up. Come on. Um, but uh, but yeah, basically, I just think of you as someone who's like very, very balanced in in how you treat other people and how you treat yourself. Like You just seem like a very solid, nice dude. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. Usually, uh, uh, usually, because like some of my friends will t uh, tell me, "Oh, you're a nice guy," and in my mind, I'm like, I just hit the bare minimum of human decency. It's like, yeah, yeah, but that's what a nice guy would say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what a nice guy would say. So, hey! Mister Nice Guy, would you please plug and promote anything you have going on? This comes out uh, in a, a week from Monday. Uh, we, uh, so I think the main thing I have go uh, going on on July 20th, I will be doing a roast battle at Grove 34. Woo! Hell yeah. Who are you up against? I'm against Mac O'Hara. Nice. Whoa, that's gonna be crazy fun. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've heard. Uh, I've heard he, he's re he's really go uh, good. And it's like when I was offered, I was just like, I don't want to say no. So I. Said <laughs> yeah, no. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's gonna be great. Yeah. Hell and, yeah. And then like at at some, uh, um, I'm work. I'm still working on a couple video project. Pr one is a short film called uh, America's Dating Game. We'll hopefully finish. Uh, Finished that up over the summer and might be in festivals near you. We'll see. Nice. And, uh, and then I'm all. Uh, I'm also continuing to wor uh, work on a documentary on stand-up comedy, which will be out oh, at some shit. point. That's nice. awesome! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. We love stand-up comedy. I've heard of this. Yeah. 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 You have anything you want to plug and promote? I want to plug and promote this. <laughs> Um, nice. And for this reason, and in this essay, where can you find the podcast episode that you're listening to right now, audience? <laughs> uh, for this essay, I reason. Um, oh, um, Molly Zalman's show, July 23rd. Nice. Um, and then I'm opening for the improv team, friend of the pod, Meredith Dietz is on. Ooh. Uh, July 31st. Full of bones? Is that? Full, is it full of phones? I think it might be. That feels like an attack on me. <laughs> I could be wrong. I am full of phones. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, got other things. You can follow me on Instagram. If you've made it this far in the podcast, you absolutely already follow me on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. You so do. you can unfollow me if you made it this far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, unfollow Gabby. Yeah, unfollow Gabby and just follow her again so she gets a new notification. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. I need to feel something. Oh, wait, would you please plug? Uh, did you plug your social? Oh, no, uh, no, I didn't. All right. So I have to say, like, I ended up choosing social media chaos because on, <laughs> Good. on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, they are all different handles. Yeah. Uh, well, give, give them out. Give them so out. So my Instagram. Instagram handle is just belton.df. Okay. My Twitter handle is Belton Del Toro. And oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and my okay. TikTok is probably Belton. Probably. Belton. Yeah. Oh, is it probably Belton? Yeah, it's literally probably Belton. Oh, oh okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. L like at probably Belton. I should have probably specified. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did I just make it sound like I didn't know my own TikTok? Yeah. A little bit. I was like, it's oh, probably okay. Belton. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys already got my socials, I think. Yeah. At Lucas T. Arnold on all social media. Um, by the way, I just want to put it out there. I don't go by Lucas T. Arnold. A, a couple people have like introduced me at shows. I'm like, have you guys not looked at my name? You go at the by top probably of my... Lucas. I go by probably <laughs> Lucas. Yeah. But a lot of people never look at the name that is just on my profile on any social media. They always read the, my social handle, which is not my name putting it out there it's just lucas arnold but i will be uh, say his name <laughs> say my name 
Yeah, I um, very soon tickets are going to go live for my show in Edinburgh with uh, Wyatt Figurado and Otter Lee. Uh, stay tuned for that on my socials. I will be posting about it. Otherwise, all I have to say is thank you, Belton Delane Facey, for you, being Belton an amazing Delane guest. Oh, yeah, thank You're you the for best. Me. You are so fantastic. Thank you very much, Belton, for thank coming you, on. Yeah, thank you for You've having me. You've been two nosy mere cats, and we will see you up your butt. Boom.